Hello and welcome to another episode of Sabina has something to complain about. In this case, I have a complaint about myself. I've been alerted that I lack nuance and I think it's a fair criticism. So today I want to offer you lots of nuance. You can even take two if you want. I've been worried about the problem with academic research ever since I became part of it about 20 years ago. I didn't accidentally say that I became part of the problem because that's exactly what happened. Then, about 10 years ago, I wrote a book about what's going wrong in my own research area, the foundations of physics. But I'm afraid that the problem also befalls other disciplines. It's a failure of science to self-correct. Science is failing. It's failing right in front of our eyes and no one's doing anything about it. My book is called Lost in Math. Unfortunately, people who haven't read the book sometimes think I'm saying that physicists use too much mathematics, an argument which is also used by some pseudoscientists who want you to buy their self-printed pamphlets about eclectic universes or whatnot. Actually, what I say in the book is pretty much the opposite, namely that physicists don't take math seriously enough. But it's of course entirely my own fault that people make claims about my book without having having read it. I therefore want to acknowledge my privilege and accept full responsibility for the centuries of oppression, cultural erasure and systemic inequality. Ah, wrong script, sorry. Okay, forget news, I'm not good at it. Why the fuck is it my fault that cranks think I'm their best friend? Because I'm pointing out that there's no progress in the foundations of physics. It's a fact. We haven't made progress in theory development for 50 years. We still use the quantum field theory of the stand-up model, which dates to the 1970s, and we still use general relativity, which is more than a century old. Yes, some measurements that confirm these theories are more recent. The heavy quarks were only measured in the 1990s and the Higgs in 2012. The cosmological constant made a comeback, neutrino masses were confirmed and gravitational waves were eventually directly detected. But the theories for all that are from the 1970s or earlier and the problems we're trying to solve today are even older than that. What is dark matter? How do we quantize gravity? What's a measurement? These are from the 1930s, when American students were studying how many live goldfish they could swallow and no one asked for an ethics approval. That's how old these problems are. The problem is not that 50 years is a long time, not just because I was born in the 1970s and find that offensive, but also because it's plausible that progress slows down as a discipline becomes more mature problems become more difficult. The easy things have been done. Experiments take longer to build and become more expensive. No, the problem is not that it's taking so long. The problem is that physicists have tried to make progress with methods that have failed over and over again for 50 years, and they're still doing it. They're still using methods that don't work, and they're still not learning from their mistakes. They aren't taking into account the evidence which clearly clearly shows that their methods are not working. And that's a failure of science to self-correct. This is why this worries me so much. It shouldn't happen. It's a community of tens of thousands of physicists, intelligent people, mostly, who have for half a century used methods that evidently do not work, and they continue to do it. What are those methods? Well, I explain that in my book with great nuance, but to make a long story short, they basically guess maths, which they like for one reason or another. And to the extent that this maths made falsifiable predictions, they've been falsified, like grand unified theories and supersymmetric models and so on. So what's left now are the unfalsifiable ideas like multiverses and string theory and inflation and so on. And there is always new maths they can guess. This method of theory development isn't scientific. Please imagine scientists in any other discipline worked like that. Biologists inventing new species and then making expeditions to find them. Chemists inventing a hidden dark sector of the periodic table. Neurologists arguing it'd be pretty if synaptic connections followed the E8 root diagram and then putting people into MRI machines to search for it. Sounds insane? Well, that's what it is. Yet, 
in the foundations of physics. That's what they're doing. And if you ask them, they'll tell you that this is good science and that the only problem they have is people who lack nuance. Well, I think these past 50 years will go down as one of the most embarrassing episodes in the history of science. I can't stop physicists from continuing this insanity, but I can distance myself from it and I can draw attention to the problem. And that's what I'm doing. The reason this worries me so much is that I think this is a systemic problem caused by the way we organize academic research. This means it can happen in other disciplines and probably does happen. This is why I don't trust scientists. I can't, because I've seen in my own field that thousands of them might pursue for decades what's obviously pseudoscience, like arguments from naturalness or the so-called wimp miracle. Hell, just the names tell you that this isn't science. It's numerology, like, you know, the diameter of the pyramids in inches is 660 times the square root of my little finger. And again, you don't have to take my word for this. It's all in the published literature. Do you remember how physicists were arguing that the LHC would see evidence for supersymmetry before it turned on? Didn't happen. Did you hear any of them explaining why they were wrong? No, I haven't either. And I really think they should find out what went wrong there before asking for money to build an even larger collider to look for more stuff that doesn't exist. I don't blame individual physicists or research directions that they happened and this is where I disagree with Eric Weinstein. I believe that the problem is caused by community reinforcement and the way that academia is funded. I don't want to go into this now but let me know in the comments if you want to hear details. Eric is one of the few people who sees the problem in the foundations of physics for what it is. He's drawn attention to it and he understands how serious the situation is. However, he seems to think the problem was was caused by string theorists. I don't find this very convincing because string theory hype was a very American phenomenon and at least from my admittedly European perspective, particle phenomenology, supersymmetry in particular, were far worse. So I don't blame string theorists. Ultimately, I don't know what caused the problem. I can only speculate. But it's not a speculation that we do have a crisis in the foundations of physics. It's a fact that we haven't made progress with theory development for 50 years. People who work in the field will often try to tell you that, oh, we've learned this or that obscure mathematical fact, and it's all so very exciting, and soon, soon there'll be a breakthrough, and you'll have no idea what they're talking about. You'll think it's just over your head, so better not ask. I want to strongly encourage you please do ask. Ask them what it's good for. Ask them what we've learned from it. Ask them what we can do with it. Ask them why your taxes should pay for them producing papers. I think they owe you an answer. I get hate mail every time I talk about this. Some scientists don't want me to mention this because they say it fuels the fires of science deniers. It does, but that's because science deniers are right when they say that academia has a big problem. Ignoring this problem won't make it go away. We need to talk about it and we need to do something about it. And it should give you a pause that scientists and certain YouTubers don't want me to talk about this because they're causing a lot of pressure on other scientists to tow the party line. I don't give a shit what others want me to say, or not say as it were, but then again I also eat instant coffee powder with a spoon, so maybe I'm not a good sample group. To come back to the issue of my videos sometimes lacking nuance, which is true, I've talked about these problems with academia literally hundreds of times in seminars and public lectures and podcasts. I've done interviews, I've written about it, and of course I have done videos myself. And sometimes, you know, I just get tired of repeating myself. This channel is basically my living room and you're all my family. 
Indeed, if I record videos, I like to imagine I'm talking to my brother. My brother's an engineer and a big nerd, and he's usually interested in what I say, or at least he's good at pretending he is. So basically, I think of all of you as my brothers and sisters. Of course, I rationally knew that you aren't actually all my siblings, unless there's something my parents didn't tell me. But this is why, in videos on my own channel, I often don't repeat what I've already said a dozen times before. I find it boring, and I'm afraid you'll find it boring too. It doesn't help that I try to ignore how much this channel has grown, because I find it psychologically difficult to sit in front of a camera knowing that some hundred thousand people might watch it. I don't want to excuse this, I just want to explain what's happening. I'm trying to balance novelty with repetition, and I strongly rely on your feedback for this. So please do let me know if I err into one direction or the other, because it's not intentional. That said, I think the true issue that some people have with me is not my lack of nuance. The true issue they have is that I'm not a cheerleader for science. If you're looking for, whoa, science is great channel, you're in the wrong place. Some of science is great, some of it isn't, and I talk about both. As simple as possible, but not any simpler. Basically, come for the science, stay for the complaints. One thing that has progressed in the last 50 years, though, is education. It's amazing how much easier it's become to learn science. And the best place I've found to do that is on Brilliant.org. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and follow-up questions. I found this to be super effective for learning something new. It really clicks into your brain very well. Whether you want to learn coding in Python, how large language models work, or brush up your physics, Brilliant has you covered. It's such an easy way to learn that you can fit in whenever and wherever you have time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. It's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It covers all the basics such as what a wave function is and how interference works and why entanglement is so important. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.